Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about the measurement. Let's go to the PowerPoint first. So basically, we're going to talk about the two things. One is measurement, and the other is scales. We have two chapters, but I combine into one PPT so that it's it's more consistent. Our learning objectives are, first, to develop a basic understanding of measurement concept and process. Number two, to distinguish four different levels of data. Number three, to understand the concepts of reliability and validity. Number four, to learn about different types of measurement scales. What is measurement? The measurement is kind of very important process in market research because uh, the market research in most cases actually we're trying to quantify variables to make sense of what's going on so the measurement becomes extremely important in the whole process of market research the measurement is basically it's a process of assigning numbers or labels to persons, objects, or events in accordance with specific rules or representing qualities or quantities or attributes. And uh, this definition may sound a little more complicated, but in fact, it's very straightforward. For example, we assign labels to persons to describe a uh, person's attributes. For example, we assign label for, uh, to uh, male to, to a person or female to a person. Basically, so we label persons based upon a particular rule, which is say uh, male and female, M and F. You know. Or we can uh, using uh, Using number to use a number to assign assigning numbers to a person's objects uh, events. For example, we can assign numbers to uh, let's say an event. You know, like so one represents uh, gold winners, the two represents. Uh, silver winners and three uh, represents bronze winners. So we have one, two, three. It's a ranking process. So basically we have some predetermined rules to follow in order to assign, uh, measure particular uh, person, measure particular objects or events to describe persons, objects or events. So those other rules basically we uh, follow to in order to quantify persons, objects, or events, qualities, attributes, or quantities. We have four different levels of measurement, as you can see, starting from nominal down to ordinal to interval and to ratio. Just remember that from the nominal all the way down to ratio, uh, the level of sophistication becomes higher. That is, the, the, the first level, nominal level, is the most simple, least sophisticated level of measurement, and uh, while the ratio is the most sophisticated. So let's uh, look at the nominal nominal scales or nominal level of measurement. Basically, the scales that uh, uh, partition data into mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive categories. That is nominal. Is basically it's a categorization scales, categorization measurement. Uh, we basically, for example, we uh, categorize people with regard to its attribute gender into male and a female, in most cases, obviously. Or we can 
categorize uh, different types of ethnicities into, uh, in, in America, for example, we categorize people's ethnicity into uh, white and uh, Latino, African American, Asian, uh, American Indian, or Alaska Indian uh, natives. So those are the categories, and uh, they must be mutually exclusive and uh, exhaustive. Very important. Next type of the measurement is called ordinal. In addition to classifying, ordinal skills actually uh, has more characteristics, which is uh, give a sense of uh, ranking or the order of you know from the biggest to the smartest or from the most uh, prestigious to the least prestigious. Uh, a good example would be something like uh, the gold, silver, bronze um, winners. And the, the third level of measurement is called an interval. Interval has the attributes of ordinal, but interval has the characteristics plus equal intervals between points to show relative amounts. They may include arbitrary zero point. Uh, interval scales, uh, which we're going to take a look at a little bit more in depth in the next couple of slides. The ratio is actually the most sophisticated type of measurement. Uh, has all the characteristics of interval scales plus a meaningful zero point so that the magnitudes can be compared arithmetically. So let's look at the, each different type of skill or uh, measurement skills. The nominal data actually we can we scale that partition partition data into mutually exclusive collectively exhaustive category. Uh, for example, we sometimes ask people questions in terms of yes or no questions, it's like two categories. Uh, usually a nominal data, they you can also like for example gender, ethnicity, occupation. And uh, nominal data typically uh, we can only do percentages, and we can only sometimes do cross tabulations, which we can talk about when we in more in detail when we do data analysis. Cross tabulation examples, for example, if you look at the look at the the uh, one variable, and then you don't see much difference, but if you break down by ethnicity or by Political affiliation, for example, uh, you 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 know yours begin to see more nuanced uh, interpretations of particular phenomena. Okay, next type of the scale or measurement is called ordinal data. Ordinal data that that really uh, it's it's very very uh, interest uh, very very um, easy to see the relative, relative uh, kind of order in terms of from the best to the least, uh, best liked, worst liked, you know, and also the first, sec second, third. So those are the kind of like uh, typically, uh, it, it, it is kind of classifying, but at the same time give the sense of the magnitude, meaning the quality of being uh, you know, in the case of the first, second, third is like uh, prestigious um, winners. So, ordinal data it can also we can do something like percentages. We can do cross tabulations. Also, we can measure its mode and also and a mean for some types. Uh, so let's look at the next different type of in data. Interval data. Interval data is really something that uh, uh, really important for uh, social sciences. Lots of uh, data, for example, measurement on uh, mental constructs, for example, attitude, uh, motivations, perceptions. We tend to use interval data. Uh, the 
interval data, we uh, the most often use the called light scale data, which is you know um, most of you probably see it quite often in surveys. Like uh, strongly agree, somewhat agree, agree all the way to the other side is uh, um, somewhat uh, disagree, uh, disagree, somewhat disagree, and strongly disagree. So that gives you some kind of interval. So from it usually the interval data, they, we, we tend to have uh, equal interval, meaning that, for example, if you have the one, two, three, four, five, and uh, so the difference between one and a two, two and a three, the three and a four, four and a five, the interval is one. Now, mathematically, it makes sense, right? It's equal interval. But in social science, when we measure mental construct, we want to make sure that those ones are actually psychologically equivalent. So those ones should be the same. Uh, the social scientists actually they figured out uh, that it is the same, especially on a five-point light scale from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five. So those ones are psychometrically equivalent. This is extremely important to social sciences because without this psychometric validity, it's impossible to measure uh, constructs like uh, attitude, intentions, and even more emotions, you know, so we use like a scale to measure. So interval data is extremely important. Um, and also some of the uh, other variables like we measure age, income, sometimes we use them as interval data, uh, try to be much more sensitive to respond, you know, try to make sure that uh, this is of data, uh, we, instead of asking people's age directly, like what's, how old are you, we use the age range, uh, you know, like under 18, 18, 34, 35, 44, and 45, 54, etc. So we use age, into, uh, like age range, uh, so that it's, it's, uh, it's it becoming less sensitive to respondents. We also use income, uh, and because the, the how much money you make kind of uh, more uh, sensitive information, we tend to put the income categories or income range, you know, under $20,000, and then we have other category from uh, 20,001 all the way to, uh, to $30,000, and then from $30,001 to $40,000. So we have a 10,000 as, inter as a intervals, you know. So that's, those are the type of the data that we use. Uh, interval data, they are very useful for, uh, in terms of uh, analysis. Uh, pretty much we can do uh, most statistical tests, a standard deviation, variance, kurtosis, mean, median, mode, uh, lots of things we can do. Uh, so, uh, and also, you know, we can do correlational analysis as well, uh, which, you know, those are the kind of stuff we have to talk about them in depth when we do the uh, uh, analysis section. So ratio data are really uh, the most sophisticated type of data. It has all the characteristics of interval plus a meaningful zero point. Now, what do we mean by that meaningful zero point? Remember the interval data that uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? So uh, it, 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 there's no meaningful zero in the sense that as long as you capture the interval of one should be fine. We can do, for example, uh, minus two, minus one, zero, one, and a two. They have similar uh, application as one, two, three, four, five. So, I mean, you can change, you don't have to have, you know, a specific uh, fit to zero point. But for ratio data, zero means a lot. For example, age, you cannot have, you cannot have like, a, you know, negative 
this age, right? It's basically it's a zero, zero, it's a zero beginning, you know. So people's age you start with uh, one, okay. So uh, and also typically racial data is really a particular specific number. Uh, there's no range, there's no uh, categories, They're pretty much uh, straightforward numbers. So here we ask people's age, how old are you? Okay. And also we make how much money, how much money do you make? Uh, not, not how much money, but what's your annual household income kind of question directly. Uh, not, a, not like a, from uh, between the 20,000 to 30,000 dollars, those kind of. And number of children too, okay, you could ask them how many, num how many children do you have? Uh, instead of asking a question like, because how many children you have, you can say, well, it's from zero to one, one to three, four to five, those are the range type of data, which is uh, more like interval data. But for racial data, we, are, we definitely know that's a particular number. So for racial data, we can do a pretty much similar analysis as interval data. But beyond that, we can also do uh, just a, you know regression analysis as well uh, beyond uh, the Pearson correlation analysis. So let's look at the, the the measures or measurement in terms of its reliability and validity. So these two concepts are extremely important for measurement. The reliability basically measures uh, we call the uh, the consistency. Okay, so we basically talk about the the degree to which measures are free from random errors and uh, therefore provide consistent data. Meaning that uh, the you know you use you measure it hundred times, uh, ninety nine times, uh, ninety nine times. Those data are pretty much uh, almost the same, um, but that doesn't mean that re uh, re reliability, reliable data, uh, meaning that it's uh, it's accurate. Uh, basically, we also need to know validity, meaning that uh, uh, when you see validity, the degree to which what the research was trying to measure is actually measured. So uh, sometimes you might not be measuring the thing you think you're measuring, and then you have some uh, consistent uh, kind of error built into the process. Let's use example to see uh, the differences between reliability and validity. Uh, for example, let's use the, uh, the use the, use the example of measuring someone's weight, for example, uh, Professor Wu's uh, weight, like, uh, you know, I step on a scale uh, like 100 times. For each time, uh, you know, you, you get the, you get the, the, the readings, you know, uh, from, you know, the first time is 160 pounds, second time 160.1, the third time 159.9, and then et cetera, all the way down. So the number is very close to 160, okay? So in the sense that, uh, you know, it's pretty consistent. The, you know, the, my weight, you know, 100 times, it's on average could be come up as 160 pounds. So this is, uh, that tells you that it's very consistent, okay, the data. But uh, it, it, that doesn't, mean that my weight is, is 160 pounds and uh, what if the scale has some problem okay what if that uh, the scale is has some built-in uh like uh, built-in errors for example uh you can off by uh one uh, two pounds for example and uh, you know if i know that my actual true weight is 162 pounds and then you know, basically, it's it's a choose plus two. I mean, it's not the. I would think I was measuring my weight, but actually, I'm not measuring my weight. You, you know, so validity is more about like, so, you know, you get to the truth thing. 
rather than uh, consistent something looks like the truth. And then, so the next uh, slide, this slide really tells you uh, more about the, you know, the relationship between validity and reliability. If you look at that uh, ball mark, so the first situation that uh, you can see, it's 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 everywhere. So you know, if every meaning that is neither reliable nor valid, okay. So basically, uh, it's just uh, uh, it's there's no pattern, okay. So this measurement obviously is not going to be scientific. The situation number two that you can see, it's consistent, but it's consistently off. The board's mark. Okay, so you need to uh, have the situation like number three. So it's consistent, but also every single time you get to the the truth, the center. Okay, so the third time it's called it's really highly reliable and valid. Now there's here's a question for you. So if a measurement is valid, is it necessarily reliable? The question number two is that. If a measurement is reliable, does it necessarily mean it is valid? Now, the answer is that if a measure is reliable, it doesn't necessarily mean valid. But if a measure is valid, it is necessarily reliable. Okay, let's stop here now and then we'll cover the rest of the lectures in part two.